welcome to this session this session we are going to talk about a very interesting concept which is called the pigeon hole principle even the name of the concept seems very interesting the pigeon hole principle see the pigeon hole principle what it says is if suppose there are certain pigeons and then there are certain pigeon holes i have some pigeons and i have to place them in some pigeon holes and it simply says if the number of pigeons is more than the number of pigeon holes then what happens a scenario like this so this picture essentially depicts that i have a box with let us say nine pigeon holes and i have placed nine pigeons in those pigeon holes now what happens if i want to fit in yet another pigeon now how do i do it so the problem boils down to if i have let us say 10 pigeons and 9 pigeon holes how do i fit it in so the various scenarios see what what it says is i have 9 pigeon holes and 10 pigeons so the basic idea is that the number of pigeons is more than the number of pigeon holes right so now there are many possibilities one of the very simplest possibility can be that all the pigeons can be placed in a single pigeon hole this is this is a definite possibility you can say that all the pigeons can be fitted into a single pigeon hole leaving the remaining eight pigeon holes empty there are other situations like let us say we can say we can fit in uh, five pigeons over here five pigeons over here let's say i can put five over here five over here and then the remaining are empty or i can say there are six over here two over here one over here one over here and the remaining are empty and so on there there can be any number of possibilities but in any situation one thing is clear that there will be at least one pigeon hole that is going to have minimum number of two pigeons why because if there are 10 pigeons and i have only nine pigeon holes then there is bound to be a pigeon hole minimum one pigeon hole which is going to have minimum two pigeons a scenario like this so you can see nine of the pigeons have been placed sorry eight of the pigeons have been placed in eight separate pigeon holes and this particular pigeon hole here two of the pigeons are required to share this one single pigeon hole now let us understand this principle a little bit more formally it simply says if you put n items into k boxes the pigeon hole principle says if you try to put n items into k boxes where n is greater than k the number of items is more than the number of boxes and obviously they are both greater than 0 if i say i want to put zero objects into zero boxes does not make any sense if you try to put n items into k boxes such that n is greater than k then at least one box will have two or more items in it so at least one box has two or more items now i can x i can define this pigeon hole principle in terms of functions also we say that a function from one finite set to a smaller finite set say for example if i say i am defining a function between two sets one both of them being the finite sets and i say that the if the function is let us say defined from a function uh, let us say that the function is defined from the set a to set b and if i say that the cardinality of the set is greater than the cardinality of the set b then the function cannot be one to one see if you remember if it is a function that means all the elements of a have to participate in the function and if the cardinality of b is less than the cardinality of a that means multiple elements from the function from the set a are bound to be mapped to the single element of the set b or in other words at least two elements in the domain will have the same image in the codomain the pigeon hole principle is also sometimes called the dirichlet box principle because it was first stated formally by the mathematician dirichlet let's see certain simple examples which will help you to understand what exactly is meant by this pigeon hole principle some very simple examples we'll take first we'll say in a class of 13 students 
If there are, let us say, 13 students in a class, then at least two must be born in the same month. Now, here the 13 students are the pigeons and the 12 months are the pigeon holes. See, if I take 13 students, if I, if I, and if I say that uh, the first 12 students that I am talking about, they are all born in the different months. So, once I am covering 12 students, then 12 months are over. Then the 13th student, when I start talking about the 13th student, the birthday of the 13th student is bound to fall in a month in which a previous student has already has his birthday in. So, in a class of 13 students, at least two must be born in the same month. Now, here the 13 students can be thought of as the pigeons and the 12 months can be thought of as the pigeon holes. Let's take another example. If 102 students took an exam with maximal score 100 points, then at least two students will have the same score. Now here 102 students, this is the number of pigeons and the maximal score 100, these are the number of pigeon holes. So obviously once again, the number of pigeons is more than the number of pigeon holes. So there will be at least one pigeon hole. That means there will be at least one specific score which will have at least two students. So, we can say that at least two students will have the same score. Once again, let's take another example. In a letter with 30 words, at least two words begin with the same letter. Once again, we know that 26 letters are there in the English language and those 26 letters are the pigeon holes. And now 30 words are there. That means these 30 words are the 30 pigeons. So, obviously, the number of words is more than the number of letters that they can begin with. So, obviously, at least two words will be there which will begin with the same letter. Let's take another example. A drawer contains 10 pair of socks of different colors and you pick some randomly. Now, this, this, in this question, I am approaching the pigeonhole principle from a different direction. A drawer contains 10 pair of socks of different colors and you pick some randomly. What minimum number guarantees a pair of one color? Now, what it says is this this 10 socks, 10 pair of socks is the pigeon holes. 10 pair of socks is the pigeon holes. Now, this question is trying to ask you if I have 10 pigeon holes, what should be the minimum number of pigeons that I am choose that I am using to ensure that at least one pigeon hole will have at least two elements? So obviously that is 11. So you need to pick at least 11 socks to ensure that, that you get a pair of one color. Let us say 10, the first 10 socks that I pick, they come of all different colors. Then the 11th sock is bound to be of the same color as one of the previous 10. So we need to pick 11 socks to guarantee that I get a pair of one color. Let's take some more examples. For any choice of six digits in the set, S is equal to 1 to 9, one can find two chosen digits giving the sum 10. Now, how can I find the sum of 10? See, these are the possibilities, these are the sets, these are the, you can say, the combinations which give me the sum of 10. I can have either 1, 9, I can have 2, 8, I can have 3, 7, I can have 4, 6 and I can have 5, 5. So, these are the 5 possibilities or 5 subsets which will give me a sum of 10. Now the question says for any choice of 6 digits in the set 1 to 9. Now the first 5 digits that I choose, let us assume that the first 5 digits that I am choosing comes out of each digit is coming out of a different subset. So let us say the one first digit comes from this subset, second comes from this subset, third comes from this subset, fourth from this and fifth from this. Now, I have exhausted my five subsets. When I take the sixth digit, it is bound to come from one out one of the, these five subsets. So, I can say one can find two chosen digits giving me a sum of 10. So, let us say the first, if, if I say that the first five numbers that I choose, or let us say 1 and let us say 8, then 7, then 4, then 5. And now I am choosing a sixth digit. Now, when I choose the sixth digit, it is bound to come from any of these subsets only. So, whatever digit I am choosing will give me a sum of 10 along with the chosen one of the digits chosen earlier. So, I can say that among six chosen digits, two will be in the same subsets and therefore they will give the same 10. Let's 
take another example if there are n people obviously n is more than one who can shake hands with one another that's why i am using greater than one a person cannot shake hands with himself or herself if there are some people who are shaking hands with one another then there is always two people who will shake hands with the number of same number of people once again we will apply the vision four principle over here each person will shake hands from 0 to n minus 1 people so a totally n number of possibilities so a person cannot shake well, let us say the person there is a possibility that the person does not shake hands with anyone the definite possibility is nowadays in case of corona so the person is maintaining a social distancing so the person does not shake hands with anyone or the person can shake hands with one people two people three people four people and so on it can go up to n minus 1 why the person cannot shake hands with himself or herself so there are typically n possibilities but then again zero means that someone shakes hands to nobody while n minus 1 means shaking hands to everybody now both these cannot coexist these both of these scenarios cannot coexist if let us say a person is shaking hands with zero people that means that person is not shaking hands with anyone and if i say that the person is shaking hands with n minus 1 people that means the person is shaking hands with everyone except for himself now both these possibilities cannot coexist so that means out of a total of n possibilities one possibility has been eliminated so there are total n minus 1 possibilities so what it means is that there will be always two people who will shake hands with the same number of people so this leaves n people to n minus 1 possibilities n people is the n number of pigeons and these are the n minus 1 pigeon holes so once again we can apply the pigeon hole principle and say if there are n number of pigeons and n minus 1 pigeon holes so obviously one of the pigeon hole is going to have at least two pigeons so there will be at least one person sorry there will be at least two people who will be in the same pigeon hole that means will be sh shaking hands with the same number of people now the pigeon hole principle has a generalized version also the generalized pigeon hole principle says if we put n items into k boxes if n items are placed into k boxes then there is a box with at least ceiling of n by k and there is a box with at most floor of n by k now please pay attention this here is the ceiling function when i say when i use a function like this this means a ceiling function that means it is the smallest integer value which is larger than the value within the brackets say for example if i take the ceiling value of 2.1 it comes as 3 if i take the ceiling value of 2.9 it also comes as 3 and this again is called the floor function and this means it is the smallest integer sorry it is the largest integer which is smaller than the value within the brackets what it means is the floor value of 2.1 will be 2 and the floor value of 2.9 will also be it is the largest integer which is smaller than this value it is the largest integer which is smaller than this value and in case of ceiling it is the smallest integer which is larger than this value the smallest integer which is larger than this value this is not 7 actually it looks like 7 but it is not 7 let's understand it with the help of an example suppose there are 150 pigeons that are to be placed into 60 pigeon holes that means by generalized pigeon hole principle we can say that there is at least one pigeon hole that has the ceiling of 150 by 60 that is 2.5 or three or more pigeons and there is at least one hole which has two or less pigeons both these statements are of the generalized pigeon hole principle so if n items that means 150 pigeons are to be placed into 60 boxes then that means there is a box with at least ceiling of n by k ceiling of n by k is 3 or more pigeons and then there is is at least one hole which has floor of 2.5 that is two or fewer pigeons let's see how this is true let's prove that there is at least one hole that has three or more pigeons 
Let us assume that this statement is false and we say that all the holes have at most two pigeons. Now, if all the holes have at most two pigeons and we have 60 holes, that means only 120 pigeons can be accommodated. But we have a total of 150 pigeons. So that will leave us with 30 pigeons. So if I have to fit in those 30 pigeons within these pigeon holes, so that means there are bound to be some holes which have at least three pigeons. Now let us prove that each hole as at this, sorry, there is at least one hole which has two or fewer pigeons. Once again, assuming that this statement to be false, let us say all the holes have at least three pigeons. If all the holes have at least three pigeons, that means the 60 pigeon holes can accommodate 180 pigeons, but I only have 150 pigeons. So that means there are bound to be some pigeon holes which have less than the stipulated three pigeons. So there are certain holes which have a maximum of two pigeons. So this is how we can use the generalized version of pigeon hole principle. Let's see a couple of examples for generalized pigeon hole principle. There are 38 different time periods during which classes at a university can be scheduled. If there are 677 different classes, what is the minimum number of different rooms that will be needed? What is the minimum number of different rooms that will be needed? Now what it says is there are 38 different time periods. So 38 different time periods means these are the 38 pigeon holes. If there are 677 different classes, these are 677 pigeons. So there exists a time period which will have at least, now remember, let me, let me once again show you the generalized pigeon hole principle. It says if n items are to be put into k boxes, then there is a box with at least n by k items and there is a box with at most n by k items. Now if you see the question over here, it says what is the minimum number of different rooms will be needed. So I will be using there exists a time period that will have at least this many classes. If there are 677 classes that have to be accommodated in, into 38 different time periods, so there exists a time period which will have at least 18 classes. So if I am using 18 different, if I am having different 18 different classes during the same period, so I will need at least 18 rooms. Let's take another example. Three people are running for student government. There are 202 people who vote. What is the minimum number of votes needed for someone to win the election? By pigeonhole, there exists a person who has gotten at least this many number of votes. So, 202 is the number of people who are voting. Three is the number of people who are to be selected. So, at least 68 votes must be won by someone so as to ensure that that person wins the election or run, uh, wins the student government election. So, someone could win with, this is the minimum split. This is the minimum split. What I said is that at least 68, 68 votes are required for ensuring that this particular person wins. So, someone could win with a 67, 67, 68 split. The minimum, see the question says what is the minimum number of votes. The scenario could have been let us say 0, 0 and 202. Even this can be the scenario. But it seems the question is asking me what is the minimum number of votes needed for someone to win the election. So, in this way, pigeonhole principle helps us to identify helps us to resolve the scenarios when we have to fit in a large number of items into smaller number of boxes. Right? I hope that is clear to you. If there are any doubts, you can always post the queries to me and I will get back to you. Till the next time, thank you.